Welcome to Airborne from AirVenture 2025. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Coming up on the program today, the Spirit SE1 catches Oshkosh by surprise. H55 proves electric flight is coming to the Aeroverse. Updates from King Schools. These stories and more coming up on this AirVenture 2025 special edition of Airborne Unlimited. Today's show is brought to you by Hartzell. This is a company that no matter how big they get, they never forget the little guy. Hartzell Props and Engine Tech serve the industry awfully well. First up, the Spirit SE1 takes Oshkosh by surprise. When we laid eyes on this bird, we fell in love. And then we learned the amazing story of this Oshkosh surprise and were even more impressed. Steve, we are midway through Oshkosh and all anybody's been talking about is that little silver plane. How do you like creating a sensation? Uh, it's a sensation we expected to create, frankly. We've kept it a secret. It's a great product. We're excited to be here. Been a long travail to get here. Developing the airplane and the engine are just a lot of hard work. But we made a decision before we ever started this. We're not going anywhere or saying anything to anybody until we're done. This airplane is kind of art deco. Everyone comments about that. They say it looks like art, you know. It is, but that's very intentional. And it's not patterned after anything, but it probably has a lot of several things that people would find attractive in vintage or antique airplanes, you know. It's woven into it. As I understand it, you're ready for production. If somebody wants one right now, what's it going to take? We'll start deliveries this fall. I think there are people here who have a little trouble maybe wrapping their head around. We didn't come here to sell the three or four airplanes we brought. We came here to understand what build rate we need to go home and build at. So what will the airplane do? Tell me about the performance of the aircraft. Well, the performance, of, it's, not a, it's not a speedster. It's a 42 horsepower airplane, but it cruises 100 plus readily on a couple gallons of gas an hour. It needs 91 octane minimum. It's a 8.5, 8.6 compression ratio. So if people wanted to understand our confidence in this, the engines that we flew her on, they're right around 20 hours right now. Mm -hmm. They ran for the first time just a few days before we took off. We uh, did the production acceptance flight testing after the production acceptance ground checks. We were issued the SLSA airworthiness certificates for them. Our goal was get 10 hours and an oil filter change on them before we charge off over the Rockies. And they ran without a hitch. With Mosaic finally uh, under our belts and a new excitement for aviation, this could be leading the way. Well, we certainly hope so. Time will tell whether our formula is the correct one. We think it is. And if anyone hasn't seen it, we'd like them to come see it. H-55 proves electric flight is coming to the Aeroverse. The H-55 program has been barnstorming the country for several months with an upgraded Bristol airframe, proving the technology, installation, and procedures necessary to lead the AeroBiz into the future. It's going to be a wild ride, but at least it will be quieter. Taking this airplane, we've been flying since uh, uh, April. Um, eight state tour that will take us till uh, the middle of August. And what was interesting was different types of flight environments that we were flying in. For example, in Las Vegas, we flew at 115 degrees Fahrenheit, where the flight schools on the field were coming to us and saying, how do you do this? Because we can't fly this. Then we went to Centennial, which is the, one of the, the busiest um, general aviation airports in the United States. It's also one of the highest. Um, and there we were able to do some testing, uh, uh, density altitude uh, flights at 9,500 feet okay. with a 500 foot uh, climb rate. And that's the beauty of this technology. Right? And it was very important. The other thing we did in Centennial, which is worth mentioning, is we did some flight testing. Again, again we took another comparable uh, airplane in this category. Um, we flew them in parallel around six different sound points around the airport. Okay. Three of them didn't even go off with us. So we did sound testing, we did altitude testing, and we did, of course, temperature testing. And in every case, no degradation of the airplane. Uh, no degradation of the batteries because that's ever what everybody's worried what happens with batteries get hot and cold right and the total endurance time is 70 minutes in europe we have a, um, a shorter reserve time we only need 10 minutes okay so that's really 60 minutes of real flying time because the u.s version will come out a year later it'll be a next generation of cells okay and that's where we get to why we're saying we're 90 minutes for the, for the united okay. states six years ago we were about an hour and a half uh, of charge time to one hour of flight time. Now we're at one to one and we see that going down and our goal is to get that down and we're, we're making progress about that. 
Some updates from King Schools. The folks at King Schools have been busy. A new lot of scholarships are in the works. Resources are being developed for today's airframe and power plant techs. And the drone community is getting a lot of love to boot. The first thing that we'd like to talk about is that we've just released version 3.0 of our drone pilot ground school and test prep course. So this is really a revamp of the course and really making sure that the course is drone specific in all ways. We're excited to release that course and it's especially at a time when the drone market is really expanding for us and we're seeing the number of tests taken is almost twice any other test that's administered by the FAA each year. So it's a lot of tests taken, it's a big market, we're thrilled to be part of it. We've been part of it right from the beginning, but we have been improving our offering in that space. So it's available now, $129. It includes immediate lifetime access and all of our existing customers, of which there are tens of thousands out there already have automatically been upgraded. Now the, the next topic that I wanted to talk about is another expanding market which is not the traditional King Schools pilot market and that's the market for mechanics. There's a lot of programs that are already in place. They have their own curriculum already and what they were missing was test prep, just the test prep part. So what we've done is we've taken out that test prep part of our ground school and test prep courses and offered it separately. And we offer that as an app. It's available for uh, general airframe, power plant, all three knowledge tests, or as a bundle all together. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, we are now open for applications for both the NAFI scholarship and the Women in Aviation scholarship. So we want to make sure that news gets out and that other folks can apply and, and potentially win that scholarship and be able to expand their own flying skills and teaching skills. They both have the same award, which is about a $20,000 award in value, and you get free lifetime access to every single King course in the library, over 100 courses. After these messages, meet Centauri Aircraft Company's Valkyrie. There's a world far beyond the city lights, beyond control towers and paved runways. That's where Hartzell flies. Hartzell carbon fiber props, stronger, lighter, faster, delivering unmatched performance, relentless durability, and raw power for those who demand more. So here's to untamed skies, far away places, and the prop that's always ready for what's next. Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. I'm a pilot and aviation enthusiast myself. For me, the most exciting model I've ever manufactured was my own. It's just the coolest feeling to have on display a plane that you've personally connected with over the years. Show off that passion for aviation. You know, if you own a general aviation airplane and you want the world to know about it, put it on your desk. Inspire the next generation. If you want to share your love for aviation with a friend or family member, shop our great selection of aircraft models today. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited, coming to you from AirVenture Oshkosh 2025. If you've seen something especially cool around the AirVenture grounds today, be sure to let us know with hashtag Osh25Cool on your social posts. We would love to check it out. Up next, meet Centauri Aircraft Company's Valkyrie. The Valkyrie has been in development for quite a number of years and even made appearances at Oshkosh some time ago. Space age looking in the extreme, the next gen four to five seat canard pusher promises a top speed of 235 knots indicated airspeed and a 1,150 nautical mile range. The Valkyrie is uh, our plane, Centauri makes it. We're a small business established in California. We've been there for more than a decade now and we've been iterating in improving that plane, which is a canard composite plane. 
powered by either a TSIO 550 Continental or IO 550 with a hard cell three blade prop, retractable gear, four to five seats, service ceiling of 25,000 feet, non-pressurized, in gorgeous plane with a lot of attention to all the details from flight controls to ergonomy of the cockpit to the interior, cooling of the engine, you know, accessibility, everything we could think of. We've learned a lot from current builders and pilots of canards and we've tried to do our best to get it better. Eventually, in 10 years, 15, 20 years, I don't know how long it's going to take us, uh, we're going to get the serious owners that just are, are going to want to trade. I'm sure about that. We're selling the, the, the kit at $585,000, including the factory assist program. So it's turnkey without the engine and prop. We're pretty aggressive because overall, in a fine condition, you get half the price as, as the leaders on the single engine piston market. We're taking orders, had a few ready, and um, we're continuing. We're here Wednesday uh, morning, and uh, we're welcoming people to just come see it, uh, understand who we are, and uh, that we talk about it. FAA's Meet the Admin session was much ado about nothing. Let's be fair, the new FAA administrator has been in this gig for only a little more than a week. So not much was said, though glad tidings were in abundance while facts and details were lacking. First, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored um, that President Trump nominated me to be the next administrator for the federal aviation at this critical time. You've probably heard we have some staffing challenges at the FAA. Both the president and Secretary Duffy has recognized that if we're going to modernize aviation, we've got to first ensure that the foundation of the NAS is, is fully staffed. Somewhere between 2,000 and 2,300 young men and women have been recruited into the agency and are going through training. When we think about modernization, though, there really are three pillars. You know, we think about our people pillar, which is the foundation, again, getting the agency appropriately staffed and trained. There's obviously the modernization of the technology. It's hard to believe that our, our NAS is essentially an analog design that really hasn't seen modernization in over 40 years. It's just not acceptable. The third uh, piece of the puzzle, of course, isn't the technology, it's not the people, it's actually how do we rethink airspace design. We haven't had airspace redesign since 1993. The demands on the NAS have continued to grow and they're growing at rates, frankly, that we are playing catch up on. So this is, uh, I think, gonna be one of the most interesting and challenging parts of our modernization effort is how we think about airspace design. You know, over 65 years of uh, service in the country, we've become a little siloed. Uh, and folks tend to want to stay in their lanes, and I'd really like to see us create a culture of uh, trust and collaboration and, and be a little more forward-leaning in terms of how we're working with our aviation community partners. There's a lot of demands on the NAS, uh, but I think our team at the FAA is going to be up for the challenge, and I look forward to leading this organization for the next five years. Last night's annual Wednesday night air show was extraordinary. The combination of aerobatic planes and pilots along with pyro, fireworks and drones should not be missed. And no matter how many times we see these shows each year, they get more amazing each time. Oshkosh 2025 was no exception.
And after the break, what's coming next for EAA's impressive museum and aircraft collection? of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name, an indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel powered liquid cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at DeltaHawk.com. Welcome back. The EAA Museum is a must visit for any aviation fan. Jack Pelton told us what's next for the museum and how they're bringing history to life. You have an extraordinary museum. I get lost in here, but I love the extension work that you've done with it between video and other things and so forth. What's the future of the museum? Future for the museum is we've got a. I'm big on strategic planning and having things planned years out. Right now, the priority is to get the Kid Venture area up in the museum uh, reimagined. Mm -hmm. uh, needs to be freshened up, updated, and, and brought technology brought up. We're going to work on an annex for. We have a lot of airplanes that are in storage on our properties around here, but they aren't publicly viewable. So we're going to we're going to create an annex to get more more of the, the collection out there for people to see. We have to work through what we're going to do with creating a facility for the B-17. And when I say create the facility, it's just not walk in to look at it, but put all the other things you need around the video and uh, telling the stories that go with it. So it's a, a great experience for, for coming here. So those are some of the big projects that we have right now lined up that to keep, you know, it's a good multi-year plan. Um, and then bringing the technology. I don't know if you experienced any of our new QR codes that are on the some of the some of the displays have that, and then it brings you a video of the archives we have that m might have the individual who flew that airplane out of Timeless Voices, mm -hmm. who brings it on your phone, uh, and more more of the story about the exhibit. So you don't you're just not reading a placard. It's telling you really really why this is important. Tomorrow, in our final segment of our annual interview with EAA boss Jack Pelton, learn how Jack plans to keep EAA and AirVenture impactful and relevant for years to come. I, I still maintain that the most important things we can do is get young people here uh, and, and the families to retain them and to get them here. You got to have something in forms, hands-on activities and on the ground and in the air that would satisfy anybody's interest so that they would walk away and go, hmm, this wasn't just about experimental on build airplanes or just about uh, warbirds. It, it, there was something for everybody. And that's what we try to do every year. Thanks again to today's show sponsor, Hartzell. A huge company with a big heart serving each and every flyer. One prop, one engine accessory at a time. And that's our show for today. Be sure to keep up with all the latest news right here on our YouTube channel or aero-news.net. We'll see you back here one last time tomorrow.